And suddenly, it's your course in miracles. You have come to the time and place in your association with your body form where you are beginning to receive instructions of alternatives in regard to your location in space and in time. If you choose with this Course in Miracles, which is uh, designed to bring about a change in who you thought that you were, it's a systematic redefinition of yourself as you were contained in this containment of space-time. I'm an advanced teacher because I have advanced in uh, an illuminating process that has shown me the entirety of my relationship in this time and in this place with this little dark form and the entirety of what I am in all of universal mind. So we're at lesson 151 in this course, which is an indication it's the 151st day of the uh, association of the derivatives of your previous correspondences in your determination not to accept this message. Now, the fundamental basis of this teaching should be this, and uh, I see that you're going to see it with me now. Your determination to remain in a factoring of your conceptual self and believe that you actually occupy that body, that the self that you have identified right there is actually who you are, is what is holding you in the bondage of space and time. Now, the message of this Course from the resurrected mind of my Savior, Jesus Christ, the Savior of this world, says very simply, if you'll share with me the certainty that there occurred a procedure of a revision, not only of the timefulness of my correspondence with my mind, but in the actual physicality of my body, okay, in the certainty that your separation was an illusion contained with only within your own mind. Now, 151, the lesson that we intend to do today, uh, is the Easter lesson. Okay? My concern on whether you consider yourself to be a Christian uh, is zero. I could care less about how you insist on identifying the uh, entity consciousness called Jesus Christ who lived 2,000 years ago within a frame of time that, based on his resurrection, has no meaning or reality whatsoever. I am concerned that you recognize contained within his message was the certainty of your own resurrection without which the continuing futility of attempting to remain in that establishment of body can only increase. What I am telling you very simply from my mind to yours is that through the practice of this course there is a method and a continuing occurrence in this space and in this time that's actually showing you the entirety of the alternative. Now, could you see in this procedure, in this happening, in the teaching of this lesson that may begin soon, that all the things I see are echoes of a voice that said, we're back in heaven together, a voice that told you instantly when you entered this frame that it wasn't true that you had somehow made a wrong turn, if you want to look at it that way. What I want to impress on you as a member of the species is that that echo, that vibration, that word, okay, that sound in its entirety is going on right now in the entirety of you. 
With your permission, I'm going to go back and uh, read to you just a few passages from the text of The Course in Miracles, which comes from Jesus, from out of time, and offers you the immediacy of the possibility that you could celebrate uh, Easter at this moment, not only in the recognition that he is indeed resurrected, but in the recognition that his message to you is only that you can, will, and did resurrect at this moment. Let's listen together just for a moment what it says in chapter 20 of this Course in Miracles. As we pick this up, Jesus is speaking. I have great need for lilies, for the Son of God has not forgiven me. And can I offer him forgiveness when he offers thorns to me? For he who offers thorns to anyone is against me still. And who is whole without him? Be you his friend for me, that I may be forgiven, and you may look upon the Son of God as whole. But look you first upon the altar in your chosen home and see what you have laid upon it to offer me. This Easter, look with different eyes upon your brother. You have forgiven me, and yet I cannot use your gifts of lilies while you see them not. Nor can you use what I have given unless you share it. The Holy Spirit's vision is no idle gift, no plaything to be tossed about a while and laid aside. Listen and hear this carefully, nor think it but a dream, a careless thought to play with, or a, a toy that you would pick up from time to time and then put by. For if you do, so will it be with you. You have the vision now to look past all illusions, it has been given you to see no thorns, no strangers, and no obstacles to peace. The fear of God is nothing to you now. Who is afraid to look upon illusions, knowing his Savior stands beside him? With him, your vision has become the greatest power for the undoing of illusions that God himself could give. For what God gave the Holy Spirit, you have received. The Son of God looks unto you for his release, for you have asked for and been given the strength to look upon this final obstacle and see no thorns nor nails to crucify the Son of God and crown him king of death. Your chosen home is on the other side, beyond the veil. It has been carefully prepared for you and it is ready to receive you now. You will not see it with the body's eyes, yet all you need, you have. Your home has called to you since time began, nor have you ever failed entirely to hear. You heard, but knew not how to look, nor where, and now you know. In your knowledge lies ready to be unveiled and freed from all the terror that kept it hidden. There is no fear in love. The song of Easter is the glad refrain, the Son of God was never crucified. Let us lift up our eyes together, not in fear, but faith. And there will be no fear in us, for in our vision will be no illusions, only a pathway to the open door of heaven, the home we share in quietness and where we live in gentleness and peace as one together.